come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a group of people who wandered into a basement. They were maybe going down there like of their own free will. Maybe. maybe were they, they drawn ever... to it? Maybe this basement called to them. Maybe. Were they ever heard from again? I mean, we probably will be. Okay, well then, uh, welcome aboard the Saturday Night Freak Show <laughs> podcast. Been, Come join bed- us. It's been bedtime stories with Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Come join us under the sexy netting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> have Saturday you got Freak that installed show. yet? Oh <laughs> uh, no, it's still waiting. I still have things to put up before I get to the sexy netting. Okay, well you will have to keep us. I mean, you got to uh, create the atmosphere. Yeah. You know? Sure, right. Yeah. You can't <laughs> just hang up first. the netting. It's, it's got to. It's got to have everywhere. the right mood. Uh-huh. You know. Um, Do they know what we're talking about? Uh, see our so. Anaconda <laughs> episode. There's going to be sexy netting always, all the time from here on out, I'm sure. And Sean is now the proud owner of some sexy <laughs> netting. Yeah. Some, thank you, Holly. I yeah. have some sexy netting You're now. You're welcome, friend. <laughs> <laughs> um... So we're the we we're the Saturday Night Freak Show. We do uh, movie reviews every week. Uh, we hope that you will comment, like, subscribe wherever you found this podcast because it helps us get found by other uh, like minded individuals who like the same kind of stuff that you do, which is the same kind of stuff that we do. So who are these internet radio superstars you're going to be hearing from this evening? Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Sean. Sean, Sean Spice. Sean. Sean. Spice. Sean, what did we watch tonight? <laughs> uh, we watched 1984's Runaway, starring Tom Selleck. Mm. How do you sing the theme song? There's not. There's no theme song. There should, there should be. be. There there should be. be. Give us Bon Jovi. Come on, let's, let's uh, That's not my department. That's. Uh, <laughs> Why didn't Gene Simmons write a Ooh, theme song? Oh, no. there it is. There, there we go. Is, there. is this Jeez. our first Tom Selleck movie? I think it is. The first one with the stash. I think you're right. I yeah. think so. That is a formidable mustache on uh, that man. It is. It is. It's amazing because uh, you know you see him now with uh wait. Is he without the stash? I can't even remember. No, I think he's with the he stash. Has it, he has it. Is he doing like fidelity commercials or something? Or what? I don't see him he's in on, anything. He's on a cop show. Blue Blood. Oh, Blue Blood. Yeah, he has a stash. With, right, with, with the Donnie stash. Wahlberg. That's right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. And no, he's got the stash. So yeah, he's he was sans stash. stash just like in the 90s for like a few years. Yeah. But and he, he has that big back. like cleft uh, upper lip. Yeah. He's got to have a big upper lip to have a stash like that. Yeah. You got to have a half Someone's got to support it, you know? Yeah. A yeah, good foundation yeah. for that stash. Maybe that's Unless what we need. It just need. falls apart. Your face caves in. If you yeah. have a stash that good. Maybe we need to have like a wall of fame for uh, the best movie mustaches. Yeah. I mean, he's the only Down one who's going to go on. Tom Atkins. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. Tom Atkins yeah. gets on there. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, right, but you work. can't top Chuck Tom Selleck. Norris? No. And- Come on, what's Chuck it's more Norris of a beard look like? Situation, without, uh, isn't it? His is more of a beard situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah not, he's not for his beard. Can you see him without the stash, like in your mind? I mean, I, I mean, kinda. it's the whole beard, he's done though. It short. You know, yeah, yeah it's a whole he's unit. Really Colin. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. It's a whole yeah, unit. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right then. Uh, so you mentioned it was from the year 1984, mm-hmm. the year of the future when computers were brand new, apparently. And it was directed well. by a man called Michael Crichton. Holy written crap. and directed by oh, Michael Crichton. That's the guy the who created Yikes. ER? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and many other things, <laughs> including created Jurassic Park and Westworld. ER? Sphere. <laughs> and ER well, yeah, ER. Like, yeah. It was a big thing. ER was a big thing. Sphere. Oh, that's right. Sphere, yeah. Sphere. My God. Mm. We have done so many Michael Crichton Hopefully movies. Hopefully, future show. freak show pick Congo. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I mean, you know it, it. should be. Yeah, it you know it. it's, it's it's coming up. Stay you tuned. Know, you know that's on my list. Yeah. <laughs> the Grey Gorilla. Yeah. yeah, and Westworld. Oh my Westworld yes, seems yes, appropriate yes. to the subject of this film, kind of. Yeah. Technology Robots. run amok. He loves yep. technology. Yeah. Future mm-hmm. technology. He does. I'm still trying to figure out how this guy like graduated from uh, novelist to filmmaker, but you know he's a writer, director. Hey, it doesn't does. take much. Yeah. Sometimes it really doesn't. Jack of all trades. Sometimes they try it, they don't succeed. Stephen you know, King. Yeah, I was gonna say Stephen King got to do it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Dean Koontz never got into the game, did he? he just think, stuck did to he books. ever direct? No, I think did, he has he ever books. written a script for one of his movies? Ooh, I imagine he I has wonder. to. I feel like point. he has to have at some point. 
You might be right. Yeah, I'm giving it I don't a know shot. What it is, but uh, <laughs> we've stuck to three uh, authors, and I'm sure there's many. Well, there's there. Clive Barker, <laughs> sure, writer director, obviously, but he yeah. quit. He did what three, and then he's out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Michael yeah. Crichton had somewhat of a career doing this stuff. He did uh, other things. Let's let's see. He what did, are you talking about? Well, he did uh, pers- pers- Well, yeah, uh, writing and directing. Um, mm-hmm. I think this was his last sci-fi movie that he directed, actually. But he directed um, well, he wrote TV Twister movie Pursuit. After this, right? He did what? Twister was written after this. We're talking about Twister. Well, yeah, that's Michael Crichton. Twister. Twister. Really? Yeah, I don't believe you. I know you got to look it up. I'm gonna look it up. Did so he it, have it was any... him and his wife? I think wrote. Uh, really? Twister. Did mm-hmm. he have any involvement in the Benjamin Brett Andromeda Strain? He wrote. He the, wrote, he wrote twi- the novel. Uh, Andromeda Strain. Right, but did he have any involvement with the like I don't adaptation? Know. He I wrote think Twister. You're right. He may he did. have. Holy shit! One of my all time. Wow, movies. one of the love best it. movies ever I of the 1990s. Well, because that's I guess the thing about him, right? It's like he was a novelist, so some of the films there's like movies based on his books, like mm-hmm. Disclosure or Rising Sun, stuff like that, mm-hmm. which I'm not sure that he wrote the screenplays for. Right. Mm-hmm. But then he's also written and directed films, and he's also written films that other people have. Directed. Thank so Thank God he did, didn't direct Twister. Thank yeah, that might have been something. <laughs> Lord, I didn't know he wrote My that. God. Right, what do you got Amazing. against Michael Crichton, the director? D- d- I mean, I've this got movie. I've got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> other people, other people might like. Yeah. You know. Wait, let's see. What yeah. he's, uh, Coma. He directed the Great Train yeah, Robbery Coma. of 1978. Yeah. It was obviously oh, wow. a remake. Wow. Yeah. If you know anything about uh, yeah, f- uh, we know man. cinema. Looker. 1981. Mm-hmm. The models. Yeah. The, yeah, I remember that one. I haven't seen that one. Uh, Runaway. This movie. Something. Physical Evidence in 1989. Well, I don't know that one. Uh, the Thirteenth Warrior. It was an uncredited right. Oh uh, shit! That's right. The, Antonio Banderas. Yeah, it was based on his Eaters of the Dead. That was the uh, sure. He directed that one. He directed that okay. one. Okay. He wrote a lot of things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's he's got credits on Lego Dimensions, but I mean he's dead, so that was obviously <laughs> right uh, later than usual. Uh, Are we saying that uh, he directed Andromeda Strain? No, I just wrote no, it. no, just wrote it. So, I, yeah, I can't remember Novel, on the Westworld episode that we did. You'll have to go back and listen if uh, that mm-hmm. may have been like his first directorial debut. That sounds That's right. Right? It we does. were talking about that yeah. at the time. Yeah. I don't really remember, but it sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Go, Twister, all that Jurassic Park stuff, Sphere, the novel. 13th Warrior, Jurassic Park 3, again, this is based on characters. Uh, all this writing stuff is mostly just based on the things he wrote. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all novel stuff. So he did more directing than writing of screenplays, I th- looks like. Hmm. A talented man. A multi-hyphenate. Mm-hmm. And man, did he know his technology. He knew technology, <laughs> like, before the technology was there, he predicted it. Does he know anything about acid? <laughs> yeah, that's like it. It doesn't You're right. appear so. Yeah. Acid is not a technology, <laughs> so he wouldn't know anything. We're not talking yeah, about the psychotropic true. substance. We're no. talking about the Which actual like knows. hydrochloric. Yeah, right. like it should acid. burn your face off. Like a biological yeah. substance. Yeah, yes. because in this movie, it's used as a weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by a fleet of in killer the, robots. In the third act, it's Spider used as a robots. weapon. Yes. It is not mentioned in the first two acts of this movie. No, that's true. Because I assumed it was a poison. Right? Yeah. The movie is about... Uh, I mean, technically it is. If you inject uh, acid into someone's neck, what does it do? It will, right, I but mean, true. it will burn them, but it will also poison but it their just, body. But for the first two acts die. of this movie, we just see a needle go into their neck, yeah, and that's know. it. We don't yeah. know what's happening. If it's, if it's acid, I feel like they should mention that sooner. Yeah. It just, I don't know. It's I just assumed like that like, it was maybe piercing they don't an know. artery and the spiders them. don't really, they, they attack a few people, uh, a few police officers, but maybe yeah. they don't necessarily know what uh, what is in those injections. True. No, I, I understand. It just, they, it just seems odd. That it the wasn't. autopsies haven't figured that out yeah. at this right. point. Yeah. Like, that no one made it. It, it seem like seems like he was burned. Like all of his veins have been dissolved. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. seems like a plot point they would have mentioned earlier. Is all well, there's or a lot of yeah. Uh, yeah. things in this movie that maybe you have to kind of paper over with a little bit of imagination. Mm. That might be one of the things. It's an we? understatement, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> paper over that with some imagination. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Mm-hmm. So, okay, in the future world of 1991. Wait, mm. now you said it was mm-hmm. 91 before we watched this movie, Sean, but where'd you get that from? Based on Tom Selleck's age at the time uh, in this movie, which is 35, which is, says in the movie, and when he was born, which it also says in the movie, the year is 1991. Oh. 
Okay. There's that Yikes. math. All right. All right, then. All right. It's all revealed in wow. the movie. So, so in the future world <laughs> of 1991. Sean did his movie maths. Oh. Okay. There's apparently, well, in this world, I guess the setup is, is that in the world now, uh, computer technology and robotics uh, have helped out mankind and are everywhere in every single uh, part of your it's life. It's the Jetsons. Right. Well, not <laughs> quite. Well, yeah. Yeah. I guess because they do have uh, not as humanoid like as the Jetsons. Yeah. No, the robots, robots are go. super primitive. Super. Like they're they're like Colin. You said they're like battle bots, and like I would they argue are. most battle bots are more sophisticated than the robots. In yeah. This movie. Until yeah. they get a gun. Yeah. But that's the thing. I guess like you know, even watching it now, it's kind of one of those things where you're sitting there going like, wait, how much of this technology did they have at the time in mm. some shape or form? And how much of this is just a you know complete fabrication or you know they definitely didn't have drones, which they have in this movie, but I don't think they had at the time. I think you mean floater camera, floater camera, yeah, the floater, floater camera. camera. They did not have floater cameras. I don't think they I never think know how. In these science fiction movies, they never know how to refer to <laughs> the technology in a way that we now you know can hear it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and have it be contemporary because it's like, well, what uh, what kind of uh, robot do you have there? <laughs> it's it's a series based on seventeen what they do. agriculture. Like, oh, Series 17 Agriculture, that's better than the Series 16. Those ones were uh, lemons, you know, or whatever the hell. It's just based on series and what the the action of the robot. That's Mm. how they describe it. That's their name. What does it do? Well, it floats and it's a a camera, so it's a I just feel like the obvious would have been hover cam. Yeah, no kidding. You know, I feel like that would have been the obvious choice. But it does more than hover. But when they say float, that makes you think it's like a water cam, you know, like it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna bop yeah. on the like the it surface of the water. In the yeah, air, like, yeah, though. it's not yeah. floating. Yeah. It's hovering. And by float, you mean it's that. towed by strings. Of course, <laughs> exactly. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't look behind the scenes here. The, the man yeah, behind the, the curtain. curtain. Yeah. It's hard not to though, because when they first put it in the air, it drops like half a foot first before it comes back up. And it like does that <laughs> wobble where you know it's being held by a string right in the middle, so uh-huh. yeah. so it's not quite even on either side. I'm like, come on! They had some kind of little fan propelled. Like you may not have had a camera on it, but right. But like, I mean, come on. There was model fucking airplanes right. and, and shit in the eighties, right? right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, you could probably yeah. build if you yeah, could yeah. build a tiny helicopter to like do that. You yeah, could build a propeller that mm-hmm. holds a, a fake fucking robot in the air. Maybe the Apparently control not. of it was like uh, a little wonky, so they sure. couldn't make sure it would go where you wanted it to go. So mm-hmm. we're like, we'll just uh, suspend it on wires. You would think they would have had drones back in the day, but mm-hmm. no, nope. not. No. Well, I know they didn't have camera technology that yeah. small, obviously, so that's like uh, the, the seeing the future. You know how that it's interesting to me watching this movie and knowing that it's only what, three years away from RoboCop? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. because it kind of feels like, I mean, they're both movies are trying to do this like, uh, we're a contemporary movie, but we're we're five minutes into the future or whatever. We're just on the edge <laughs> yeah. of like this technological... The like revolution, but it hasn't really changed most of the way you live. Right. And I think that's always the problem that they have. It's like, well, you still, you know, everything's the same in life for the most part, you know, your work, your job, your family life, except that you've got like a robot in the house that, you know, looks like a gigantic TV console that <laughs> motors around and talks to you. Yeah. yeah. Cause there wasn't they like didn't, in Rocky. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> like that. Just like the that. best version of advanced technology that helps. Does anyone have a name? I never yeah. thought I, I would hear anyone say that about a Rocky movie, honestly. You know, the what best version of that technology. It had a name. It had a name. Yeah. It god, had a name. if I know what it's called, but Floyd. It was a sh- no, no, it was a no, she. I'm pretty it was, sure it was yeah. a she. Rocky oh, had one. Shit. Apollo what was had its name? one. <laughs> we'll have to go deep into the memory banks for this one. This one's called Lois, <laughs> which is like, I mean, I guess it's a feminine name. We always seem to name our artificial intelligences. You know, I mean, we have, we got to keep our voices down because she's listening. She, Alexa, yeah. you know, Alexa uh, awesome. Siri, you know, those, those folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're not the only ones listening. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or listening. just standard OK Google. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Ooh. I know. Well, well, yeah. Nothing well, watch got it, triggered. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. My phone's too close. <laughs> so, well, in this uh, world, if I can get a uh, nap in there, Sean, since you're not paying <laughs> Got a little beer malfunction mm-hmm. here, guys. Right. <laughs> beer malfunction. The beer's fighting the back like the robots. Yeah. yeah the robots back. are coming. Yeah. And, and clean that up. Yeah. Just be like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, in this world, this future world where sure. there's robots everywhere. Where we don't spill beer. <laughs> uh, apparently, the world needs uh, a police force that can deal with uh, these malfunctioning robots. Yeah, the, the Runaway Squad. Where the movie gets its title from. And where they say it like 30 times in this movie. Yeah. yeah. You want to play a drinking game yeah. during this movie. Shot every time they say Runaway, you will be shit-faced. Border, yeah. Borderline alcohol poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, at the beginning of the movie, they're called out to um, like a farm where a runaway robot, which looks again like the little battle bot or something. Yeah, you know what a they look like? Primitive battle bot. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, I mean, if you haven't seen this film, listener, the you're familiar with Star Wars. You know, in the hallway where Chewbacca yells at that little uh, the little truck. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. It, but you put like a hand on it. Yeah, yeah, grip. yeah. Yep. Yeah. On the front of it. Uh-huh. That's about the technology. That's exactly what I was thinking of when we were watching yeah. this. Yeah? Yep. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Imagine the terror, Holly. Well, you don't have to imagine it. You saw it. Mm. Listener, imagine <laughs> the terror that you would experience if one of those robots went renegade in your house. I mean, imagine Or it. in your cornfield. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and by going renegade in the cornfield, we mean it's just mowing down the rows of corn. Yeah. That's it. One row. Yeah, like, but yeah. You, so you don't own corn. This could be like the apocalypse to a farmer so that they would have to call in the police force to deal with this situation. I mean, the farmers didn't seem that worried about it. They no. were they were kind of making fun of the cops for even ar- responding to it. They were it. standing around like the guys from King of the Hill. Yes, they Basically, were. Yeah. And yeah. they were talking shit about <laughs> yeah. the cops while they, they were, were laughing dealing with at them. Yeah. yeah, and the cops weren't helping. Yeah. Yay! Yay. Yay. You know, Jesus. when we were watching it, because I said I'd seen this movie like mm-hmm. so many years ago, like every once in a while there were these moments that was like, hey, I kind of remember that. That was one of them. <laughs> she goes, the, the new partner cop. She goes into the uh, the or sorry. The, this is t- Magnum PI's new partner. Thompson. First uh, assignment. They go into the cornfield. She finds the robot and lifts it up over her head, and then it like and she goes yay yeah yeah she yeah. caught it yeah then it sparklers out and yeah 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 and they laughed away. at her <laughs> yeah. yeah well you I would mean, as you would yeah. yeah uh. So the uh, the this is a very du- difficult job, I would assume, for these uh, these the runaway officers. squad. Yeah. Do you really need a fucking police force to handle this kind of stuff? This is what I'm saying. In a court right? no, no, it seems no, it don't. seems like you need an IT department, yes. and that's that's about it. I know. Like, don't you call Apple or something? You call Google. I mean, who yeah, do you call? Yeah, you call the manufacturer call and be the like, "I have a problem because I purchased your product." Yeah. They turned to murder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then you have to arrest them, slap the cuffs on them, and take them away. Yeah, and like, and see, here's the better way you shoot the open of this movie, though. Like, you just show like a bunch of these corn robots, right? Like doing their job, and you show one of them kind of fucking up and malfunctioning, and that's it. You don't show the cops responding to it. You just show that there's a problem. Yeah, and right. then you have the cops respond to the murder robot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, that's better. That's the better storytelling yeah. version of this movie. There's no reason for the fucking cops nope. to respond to the, mm-hmm. the the haywire corn robot. Nope, nope, nope. Like. You're right. That seems That's like a, a different idea. problem. Yeah. So we're basically going to remake this movie is what we're going to say I think as we, we should, go through here. Actually, I mean, right. I think right. here's how you can make this movie better. I think you make it now, <laughs> but you still go with the like the utilitarian version of the robot that they have in this movie. Oh, no. really? I, no, I'd make oh, a... Yeah, no, come on. Oh, no. no. That's, that's what makes it better. I was going to say, they should all be Johnny Five robots. Like, yeah. they, they should yeah, all be still, like that. Right. Yeah. Well, you need to get those... Uh, oh, God, what's the name of that company that makes those... You, you know, want some you, more? No, that you've seen the demo. Boston on, Dynamics. Oh, Boston yeah. Dynamics are about the constant source Ooh, of my nightmares. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that'd be good. Yeah, like, the Boston Dynamics has decided to go wide with their prototypes, mm-hmm. and, and, and oh, now God. they're in Lloyd everybody's home. Things, right? Yeah, but then shit starts going wrong. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they're still they still kind of look like that. Right, the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're still kind of the dog thing. But they yeah. the DARPA modify dog, them yeah. to do yeah. things within the house. But they're still like. All the kings have been mm-hmm. out. Listener, so if you're unfamiliar with what we're talking about, just Google Boston Oof. Dynamics robots. You'll see things that terrified. will uh, keep you up for weeks. Yeah, we're it's, all gonna die. Yep. No, it's 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 disheartening. Mm-hmm. But the antidote yeah. to that is what's the thing about Kevin? What's Kevin saying? Uh, you know what I'm talking okay. about? Where they they had like that voice track over oh, the Boston. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like you, stop it, Kevin. It's the voice of the. God damn it, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. God damn it, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna watch it, you have to watch it with that voice. With the with the Kevin voice over. Yeah, it's too funny. funny. You the one yeah. where he keeps punching the box out of his yeah. hands. That was really funny. <laughs> yeah, that is really. Funny. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> yep. Uh, so we're not endless, at a point right now where we can be terrified of these. No, robots. and just buy bananas. 
and then just throw the peels on the floor. Mm-hmm. Apparently, yep. that will stop them. Yeah. yeah. So you'll be, we'll be fine for a little while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't Mario Kart rules, right? You know, yeah, you just throw the banana yeah, peels exactly. out, and you're fine. They're yeah, not. You'll be right. They, they can't hold a thirty-eight. We're not yet. there yet. Yeah. 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 They will be. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. They, I, they can't well, they identify can. or but pick the, up guns. But the robots in this movie can. Yes, they can. Because what the hell? I mean, like, but this is the thing that the RoboCop had. Didn't she say it was a forty-five Magnum? Right. She heard the gunshot. Then she was like, "I'm a thirty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Is she right? She knew exactly what gun type it was by they hearing go by the, the sound. shots. But uh, so back in the, I think not it was the '60s, thing. right? Possible, but not easy. The sci-fi author Isaac Asimov wrote a uh, series of short uh, novels that were all, I think, grouped in a wasn't it called iRobot? Wasn't that the? Yeah. But mm-hmm. He came up with the three laws of robotics. Mm-hmm. Or three, correct? Yep. Three. Yep. Which I can't recite here because I keep on tripping them up. But basically, RoboCop did a version of this where you don't, you know, that's the failsafe that you build into the programming of a robot mm-hmm. that keeps it from harming a human being. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't apply in the world of Runaway because Michael Crichton is able to uh, see past where we are right now, where we make fun of these things because they fall over and do all kind of goopy shit. He sees to the future where, like, you're going to have to watch out because these goddamn fucking dog robots are going to come, you know, like busting through your window. Find your gun. Injecting you with acid. Yeah, finding your gun. <laughs> Shoot up the heaven. First of all, Steph. Yeah, yeah, Sean, please stab, explain how this went down. Stab your family to death in yeah. the legs. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. They are one and a half foot tall robots. How they're stabbing people okay, to death, I, I don't know. We need to talk well, you, about yeah, this you for a second. Yeah. To okay. a poor I, person I, I do. I, what? I, I do have an explanation I think is oh, possible. Oh, this is, well, set they it up were, first, then explain. Yeah. What are we talking about? Okay, so we're talking about that Tom Selleck is called to this house where this family has been brutally stabbed to death by a renegade robot, right? Yeah. A rogue robot. Like you said, they are about what, brutally stabbed. When it. when the arm is up, it's well, like two feet. Yeah, max. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we're sitting there going like, okay, what the what fuck the did fuck? he just stab him? Yeah. In the, the crime. The crime. Because they said it used a kitchen knife. The crime right? scene is at the dinner table. They're sitting down. Mm. That's how it happened. So you're saying this robot like made them dinner so, and then was like, "Fuck you!" Yes. and like stabbed the chef. Yes. Never again. <laughs> yes, that but is what I'm saying. Here's All right, the- but after the first person gets stabbed, like, <laughs> yeah. what happens? Like, <laughs> oh no, that's how does the rest of this work? Oh no, that's where one my person ends. down. I get it. That's fine. Yeah. Well, and the for- rest of the family. Yeah. That's where my theory ends. And okay. for the sake of continuity in this movie, like we don't actually see the bodies of these victims, but we see like a below shot of them looking down at them. We see the sheet pulled back, and like it looks like he only pulls the sheet like down to their waist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. like that that we're she supposed to assume the she, they were stabbed waist times. up. Like, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the yeah. line, right? It's like, like yeah. oh, what happened, or what was the murder weapon? Yeah. They said it was it just ki- a kitchen, kitchen knife. knife. You're like yeah. supposed here's to my, imagine something horrible. Here's my horrible. next question: Is who got the bodies out? Yeah, because they were laying on the grass in yeah, the yard the, across the street. Yeah, yeah and no one's going no, in. They all ran out and died Holy in the yard. Shit. They, they bled out oh, that's the what, yard. Oh, that's what it said. Oh my god, they yes. bled really? out the yard. They, they did, did actually. The that? cops said yeah. that that yep they they made it out of the house and then dropped they bled dead. Out oh the yard. Jesus! All right, okay. wow, that's, I didn't realize that's horrifying. that. But the Just baby burned that whole neighborhood down. How about that? <laughs> the baby is still inside. The baby's still inside. And so super cop Magnum PI has to go. Robot, just burn it down. Yep, we'll find it later. They don't have a kill switch or anything. Well, they do apparently. Apparently on it if you can get to it, but the robot's got right, a gun and good on, grief. Like, nowadays, there would be a remote kill. If this were implemented across the country, there would be remote kill switches for things like this. I mean, this. we're going to get to the horrible placement of switches later on in this mm. movie, right? So. Yes, yes. Very true. <laughs> okay, here's Very my question true. about the. Okay, so they say that the robot dropped the knife and found a gun in the house, apparently. Sure. Which, okay, uh, uh, here, God, hold on, just God, bear with me for a God, second. Yeah, no, go, get there, man, um, get there. You live in a house with an autonomous robot and you think it's a good idea to have a gun. Sounds like a terrible, sure. you know, well, you set up for me. You're getting but, ready you know. to defend yourself against the robot. Yeah. It's a- um, there's definitely no way that could turn against you, right? Yeah. Um, Not at all. Yeah. My other question, Holly... Our resident gun expert. Okay, so oh, I don't want to say. That. I don't think that. At all. <laughs> I, I mean, I compared to all. compared to the rest of us, you are. So, um, the robot gets the gun and shoots like what, like three shots out the window, two, yeah. three shots. Yeah, three, and it I'm has like a handgun. It's yeah. not like a assault rifle. It's, it's like a handgun. It's right. Murtaugh's right. gun. It's so, like a yeah. six shooter. So yeah. by the time at most Tom eight. Selleck gets in there, has what maybe three bullets so left? It's got three yeah, and then two through yep. the two through the uh, the wall. Yeah. So yep. at that, that point, what are you afraid like, of, man? Yeah. You know? Yeah, it should only have six. Yeah. It's a 38. I have a 38. It only yeah. has six. Yeah, that's oh, what I'm saying. Like, yeah. 
that's why I was like, there's not yeah. much more left because no. that robot shoots at nothing through the window yeah. when they first get there. Yep, but assuming Tom Selleck has a laser gun. Mm-hmm. He does. He does. <laughs> With unlimited ammo. So what's he so well, afraid of? I have yeah. to say I am not an expert on <laughs> <laughs> Not many people are. It's laser like he's, he's going to play laser thing. tag with a dangerous robot. Yeah. <laughs> and he wears the suit that's seen in the movie poster, which I loved because it's like a shark suit with like blue pads on the yeah. outside. Chain mail. Like, chain yeah. mail. It's like a chain mail suit. It, yeah. <laughs> you're like, how is this supposed to with the so, whatever? It's just it a, cool, would help it's more, a future suit. Right? Sure. It would help more later suit. against the uh, robot who shocks people. Yeah. He never uses it again. He never Never uses it again. And there's no helmet. No helmet. No helmet. No also, headgear uh, whatsoever. That chain, with that chain mail up against the one that shocks people, he could have died. Yeah, probably. Oh God, yeah. He would have been electrocuted for yes. forever. <laughs> uh, Constant circuit of electricity. Yeah. That would have been bad. Well, I kept thinking of you dumb. somehow gonna, you know, that robot that was it later he encounters a robot that's holding Kirstie Alley hostage mm-hmm. in a uh, office room. In a scene that you know you have to see to believe because she oh really kind of calmly yeah, sitting on do. a desk smoking, going like, "I can't get out of here." There's a robot. It's attacking <laughs> oh, me. And it's mildly shocking her. It's mildly shocking, her. Mildly shocking her. her. I actually, her attitude in that scene was one of my favorite it's parts. The best, yeah, it's the best thing. It's like, <laughs> can you help me? She's please? just so annoyed, and especially when we find out that she's also being like blackmailed and like like being threatened. Her life's being threatened by this psycho man, mm-hmm. and she's just like. I'm stuck. Like, yeah. get me out. of She's so annoyed, and I love that. She's like, Ugh. Like, it's hilarious. Like, this is just the most annoying thing that could happen. <laughs> but, like, the shock isn't even, like, a taste. Like, it's not even that intense. It's, like, a mild, like, shock you get from, like, electrocute, like, right? mild electrocution. I think it's, it's you know? gauging. Like it's, it's shocking. Towels. Like, it's well, shocking it did, for yeah. a little bit, it and then it's going it to stun for him yeah, yeah, when, when he, he decides to sneak in. decides to be all manly and sneak It's like, no, I don't need to handle it. No. Who's there? Oh my god. She's very attractive. Oh, she's very I'm attractive. Gonna go I must and... save her. Oh my yeah. god. Oh, Actual line in this movie. <laughs> oh, Tom That Selleck. is a line. We are not yeah. exaggerating. Oh, it was fantastic. Who is she? She's really beautiful. Oh, yeah. she's very attractive. Really? Yeah. It's like, oh, so better save her. <laughs> that's, that's all you need, huh? All right, fine. Go well, get yeah, it. But it, of course, doesn't work because he's end up like, you know, bonking his head on the, uh, like he's hiding under the desk trying to he's scoot around. around. He's, hey, he's acting like a bumbling idiot. Yeah. Basically, he really he's trying is. to impress, like, yeah. nah, I don't need the padding. I can just go in there and it'll be fine. And she's just more annoyed. I think maybe we were supposed to get more. Uh, like that was a humorous scene than the movie gave us. I think so. Right? The timing in this movie for all situations was off. Is Michael yes. Crichton not yes. a good director? Is that what we're hinting yes. at? We I mean, many, the best. Yes. Did we not establish that earlier in our groans? <laughs> yeah. I think we did. I think we said that back on the Westworld episode. We it was did. like, well, it was his I mean, first it's, movie. It's, now you're into your career. This yeah, is like 1984. Be, <laughs> <laughs> the height of directors. <laughs> you know, maybe authors just shouldn't direct, you know? I maybe mean, they maybe. just shouldn't. I mean, and, and we're not necessarily saying all authors shouldn't, because maybe you're just, you know, maybe you're a really good director, and maybe you can make that transformation, but maybe not. Maybe you should just write books. You will be the exception, not the rule, if yeah, that's the case, you know? Yes, like, yeah. Maybe you're good at one thing, and, you know, of course I think every author is just like, well, they're going to turn my book into a movie? I should direct it. I understand wanting the ownership over that, yeah, yeah, but, sure. like, I would not consider Maximum Overdrive a success. No, like no, no. you know, I mean, like in what, in what <laughs> no, it's, regard. unless I, an ironic success. Yeah. Michael yeah. Crichton directing is Michael Jordan playing baseball. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, you're yeah. not you're not bad, but right. you're better yeah. at basketball. Like but you need you should know what you're good it. at. Yeah, right. you have yeah. better skills elsewhere. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Is it a That's well-written a movie? Well, well, I have to get to that. I was gonna say, like, you know, what the hell is Runaway? I mean, just like the core idea, would it have worked better as a book? That maybe is the question. Probably, I think. It, I the think tension would have been maybe there. written I think by he would have. I think he book. would have executed his vision better as a book. Because you would have so. imagined what these robots look like instead of actually seeing yeah. this yeah. clunky I, thing that yeah. it has not aged well. No, no. Right? no. These robots are like. Meh. I mean, the the highlight robots, the ones that make it to the uh, the poster, uh, are the little spider bots. Spider bots, bots, of course. Yeah. Which are actually like erector built sets? functional <laughs> erector set yeah. spider bots. So, you know, we see them jumping around and stuff, which is basically somebody off jumping camera and throwing close. it into a sure. shot, you know. Uh, and then it has a little needle. Or even, or even if it's not uh, being thrown on, it's the uh, it's the reverse photography where mm, it was on the off. thing and gets pulled yeah. off. And then yeah, yep. Yeah. All the movie tricks are employed. Yes, they, they are. They crawl up walls. They, yeah. You know, 
Yeah. Because those things can't. It's a lot less dynamic than what you just thought of hearing us say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah just trust less. us. Yeah. It is. It's a Tonka to or Erector set. It kind is. Of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. I was by from my kid, is. and they were just like, oh, you put it together. It's got a little motor in it, and the legs move. Yep. Bravo. It doesn't do anything. All right. So. Well, we're going to have to talk about the two, well, I mean, the, the three characters, I guess, uh, the main leads. But f- uh, for this, uh, so the, the main bad guy is played by uh, the, the fellow who played the DJ in the movie Trick or Treat. Oh, my Treat. God. Who, wh- who's, Colin. Who's that? Uh, I already hit him with a pillow. Well, he was in a band. Uh, his name's Gene Simmons. Oh. Oh, so, the guy who was in, like, the, the Wanted Dead or Alive. And, right. Yeah. The guy who was in the band Knights and Satan Service. Yeah, That guy. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. In the movie uh, Never Too Young to Die. Or yes. Did I get that with John Stamos? Yes. Was he the cross-dressing I bad guy in that? Right yes. Uh, That's so, correct. <laughs> Gene Simmons in a suit. Gene Simmons of Kiss. In a suit, a three piece suit, suit yeah, which is suit. something else. Which is not bad. It has he, like a high neck on it, too. Like, yeah, you that's know, weird. Maybe it's covering the something. The collared no, shirt has like a high neck on it. Well, he plays a guy named Dr. Luther. Not not buying it. <laughs> and he's a very sinister looking man. Like, I mean, know. just in general. Yeah. Because he look. glowers a lot and he's got crazy eyes. He's got those eyes, yeah. yeah. So explain to me, somebody, what his. Um, like as the villain of the movie, like mm-hmm. what is his end goal? What what's this guy all about? What does he want to have happen? That he the, wants the good to make guy money. How Someone, he wants to sell some evil microchips. That's yeah, exciting, he's, he's Holly. Like a Lord of War. He's trying to. He <laughs> gets these microchips that will. How because... dare you reference a better movie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's. <laughs> it's it's almost like because we only see the smaller picture of. <laughs> Of uh, that robots have um, become kind of ubiquitous around the country, but I, it seems like they are around the world at this point. And so he gets, he has computer chips made that uh, I, I'm from what I uh, see that he wants to sell to um, the highest bidder, the highest bidder around the world that will alter these robots. Examples to do- of them. The Michaela? mafia, thank you. Um, <laughs> other criminal organization. I don't remember. Yes, what else he does. He lists no, mafia yeah, stuck yeah, out yeah, yeah. because yeah. I was like Moth- mafia. Yeah, right, I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. That's a very small crime organization wants- <laughs> compared to the other ones he <laughs> right. mentioned. He mentioned yeah. big ones in like, yeah. the mafia. Like, it's like, oh well, they're mostly like small New York based, but okay, sure. sure. <laughs> he basically, just lifts like the standard overlords of crime. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> basically, but he wants to sell these chips to all these people around the world to make the most money he can, so that he can alter these robots to do nefarious things. So he's going to alter the robots. Or he, I suppose the organization. Well, he's selling will. them to the organizations that will alter the robots. Yes, because he's just a uh, evil, evil bastard. The right. way the he movie makes money. it out. I mean, he doesn't seem to have like a, he's, he. I don't know if it's how he's played or how he's written, but he's a Probably two-dimensional he's bad guy, right? It was like, ah, uh, you know, because I mean, like he, these guys don't live anywhere, right? It's like, well, no, no, we know who he is because he go just to. stands out in the middle of the fucking afternoon shooting at a suspect that our future cop Magnum PI is chasing down in an alley. And what Shoot is he at shooting him. at him with, Colin? Oh, I mean, the ultimate future gun, gun. future the, gun, the gun future Tom Selleck is holding in the poster of this movie yeah. that he never uses or yeah. has. Future gun, but the well, gun is not not good at its job, though. No. No, it's terrible, it's actually. It's very terrible, it's, actually. Yeah. I don't know if this is a good idea, but like, it's. Uh, I think the Israeli army actually is direct. At one point, I read that they had done created some type of gun that can shoot around corners. How that's possible, I don't know. But until tonight, when I saw a runaway, where it it's like it a uh, basically, it's a little rocket. So you shoot the rocket, and it hones in on the body temperature of its target. It's like a heat-seeking missile. missile. The the specific body temperature, because as they pointed out, that your body temperature is different from my body temperature. Is that like turning your radio dial to K-I-L-L? Were you here for ICO? Is it just about the number? Like if I'm 983 and Michaela's 983, which ones are going to pick? Well, there's yeah. different patterns. I don't know how he gauges it in the gun. To it never like works. Shoot. Yeah, it know, literally never works in this, this movie. Guy. So I don't yeah. know how that works because he's he's shooting it at basically in a, in a chasing scene. Tom Selleck and the guy who's running away. And the bullet only goes after the guy who's running mm-hmm. away. So apparently he's but got But it's his... right behind Tom, Se- Tom well, Selleck for 90% yeah, of it. Right. And then the so last minute it. turns so, away. Because Tom Selleck just has to duck so it can get past him. It makes no him. sense. Yeah. You know, that's what makes I'm saying. No sense. Like the heat patterns have got to be different because he's obviously mm-hmm. gauged on the guy he's going for. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is not explained in the movie at all. No. How no. this technology Except works. Except Stan Shaw, the great dependable Stan Shaw. Of course. Who we last saw in Monster Squad. Maybe? Oh, shit. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah. I think he, he was is. also in Rising Sun. I he remember. He was in Fried Green Tomato. <laughs> Stan Shaw is reliable as hell. He's been in a ton of movies. I don't know if he's still wrong with being reliable yeah. as hell. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he has the unfortunate, uh, well, I guess the and prerequisite. He has to, the, he's exposition guy. So yeah. he pulls up on his monitor. I love this. Uh, you know, and the, they still have like these like Tandy 180, you mm-hmm. know, monitors or whatever the hell, the yeah. VGA, you know. Uh, here's what the um, heat signature of you and me looks like, and somehow this you know bullet is able to find these bullets are ineffective as hell because they're like they're as slow as a man on a camera dolly. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> point, honestly, maybe even maybe even slower. Maybe <laughs> yeah, because every time somebody shoots one, we don't actually have really the technology to. I think it's like maybe animated. You see, like yeah. an animated thing on yeah, the, the black uh, hole and everything. Yeah, but it's for the one most of those part, where you, can it's, just, you could run beside it. And yeah, look at it and be like, hmm. I yeah, would have liked to have seen Tom Selleck just snatch it out of the air. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been that, that would have been, been funny. Been fun. <laughs> that would have been really Wait, funny. I've actually. seen this in a movie somewhere, right? Where somebody there was some there was some projectile that somebody grabs and they're like, I can't hold it for too much longer. And then the thing, I've no, I've seen that somewhere. Probably. I'm sure it has. I'm yeah. sure it has. Sounds familiar. And sure. I'm yeah, guarantee it came the out of the like, 80s. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hold it. You know. Yeah. The uh, rocket bullet. Wanted, maybe? I, I feel saying, like Wanted had something like that. I, I, Probably. It's, it has when, to have happened. When we were talking about like bending it around the Did, corner, that like, was Wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Bend the bullet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but once it had better logic for it than this movie, it did. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Which is a weird thing to say about that movie. Yeah. Well, but. this one has bullet cam, right? It does. I mean, I guess it has that's bullet the thing. It's a fisheye. Whenever which you shoot like the gun, an Alien Three cam. Yeah, it's a bullet. It's a guy running through with a steady cam. You know, it's like, oh, look at the. This is what the bullet sees. They should have put an overlay on it. Like yeah, Terminator something. Vision. Yeah, but well, that would Terminator make was the same smarter. year as this. Terminator was the same year as this. It came out a little bit later than this movie. Yikes. Wow. That's, <laughs> that, Double yikes. That really puts it in perspective it for does. me, honestly. Yeah. 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 That's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, we're saying stock and runaway just went down a little bit. Like on it, the oh, definitely. Yeah, I down, forgot about down that. Down a lot. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's literally like comparing the the arm robot in Iron Man to the Iron Man suit. Mm, mm, oh, like, yeah. that's literally wow, that's what it's. An, like. That is yeah. an apt comparison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bravo. Holy shit. <laughs> it's like ah. Yeah, yeah. it's literally <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> Well, if you uh, spray me again, I'm donating you to community college. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, we need to talk a little bit about Officer John Ramsey, played Is by it John or Jack? P.I. Was it Jack? Jack Ramsey? Like Jack it sounds Ramsey. better. It's Jack Ramsey. Know. Officer Jack, Jack Ramsey. Jack Ramsey. I think it's you John. have to do the trailer voice to figure I it out. I think it's John, though. Is it? I think um, so. Shit. Okay, well, Officer Ramsey. Yep. Played by Tom Selleck. Yeah. Okay, so this is, I guess, something that the screenplay actually does. It's a. Uh, Crichton has studied like screenplay or like he knows how to construct a story in some ways. It's mm-hmm. like very, uh, it's not taking a whole lot of chances in its, in its, you know, the way it's built. Everything in the beginning of the movie pays off later on, right? So the first act, the first 20 minutes is setting up all the shit that you're going to see later on, right? So we learn that uh, Jack. Tom Selleck, Jack, it is Ramsey, Jack. I could have sworn it was John. I mean, Jack is this, short for John. Yeah. So, you know. Well, he can't just John be like Jack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a regular, you know, cop going after these robots. He has to have a psychological impediment, and his is heights, vertigo. Oh, That's right. Yeah, I was leaving that a little interactive oh, thank you, to, the, thank you. to the room there. Thank you for involving the rest. He's of got he's got vertigo, uh, which we established in the, very early on. And he's like taking it. They're taking I'm a sorry, helicopter. I'm just totally like. <laughs> Totally swayed by Teacher Colin right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's waiting for the rest of us to answer. Yeah, I don't want to be talking the whole time. As he looks at the class, he's like, <laughs> so who knows the answer to this? Looks around and we're all. That's we're, right. You all got it. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're all ding, shrinking ding. back in our seats, being like, "Don't call me! Don't call me! Don't call me!" Call on me! I was like, "Don't call me! Don't call me! Don't call me!" I've had that feeling in a while. I thought about that feeling yeah. today, yeah. and I, I haven't had that feeling what? in a while. Before this, before this, I had for some reason. I was oh, thinking about that feeling. I'm just like feeling. every work Thank meeting God. I ever have. I've, I'm just like, oh, okay, oh it's don't, the don't worst call me, feeling. It yeah. is. I, yeah. I was thinking about it because, like, thank God I haven't had the feeling where I have to answer a question. Mm. Like, I have to know, be knowledgeable about something, or I'm just. I've uh, had this conversation with my coworkers. I work at I work at a college, and I I had this conversation with my coworkers. I'm like, don't 
call on your students, please. <laughs> Unless they have their hand up. Don't call them out. It's like my biggest fear. They don't listen to me. Yeah. So they still do that. I thought they got yeah, No, that never goes some away. Of them. That's just no, uh, built Some into of them it. won't do it, but some of them do it. College is all about public humiliation. Mm-hmm. That is that is the name of the right. game. Right. They're it like, is. we're going to humiliate you until you get over this shit. Yeah, yeah. Really. Until, you are, yeah. until you are scarred enough from it, you don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. Like, I'll, yep. I'll answer. <laughs> yep. I don't know. Yep. Oh, Makes God. you a better, stronger person. It does it. Hopefully. <laughs> it just makes you a more chapter. Waking does, does up at hopefully. night, it's like, what? No. Oh, oh, God, I didn't know the answer. Right, oh, so you're just sitting in your corner going, <laughs> it, just, it just makes you a more callous, apathetic person. You're it just does. like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I've been in this I don't know. I don't yeah. care. It's true. <laughs> well, he's got this case of vertigo. She which, does. Uh, why does he have this case of vertigo? Holly. Why? <laughs> student, college, the question. Question. I was literally just like, I wonder if I need more beer. <laughs> <laughs> like a true college student. That's so true. <laughs> now she's going, What was the question? Wrong, Michaela. Oh, sorry. <laughs> why, why does he have vertigo? We uh, are we told why? I thought we were just told it he just, has it. That's just, the perfect he, answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's just afraid of heights. He's just afraid of heights. Know. Yeah. Well, be, well, no, there's a reason. Thank there's you. a reason. That's right. Oh, oh. all right, well, Sean. Take it away. Oh, the guy, <laughs> <got away. laughs> the guy that got away. The guy that got away. There was a criminal that got away, but got checked yeah. out at that point. I, I was like, yeah. uh, don't Sorry. care. Yep. No, because he chased a guy into a building apparently, and he couldn't. He started getting like. Uh, uh, he started like sweating. He started getting upset and everything. And he let the guy get away because he couldn't go up in the tall building. And later, that guy killed six people. Yeah. And so yeah. that's he blames himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that's that's like saying okay to throw back. Michaela had a reaction to that. <laughs> isn't it? Because that's like saying John Spartan and Demolition Man has a fear of fire now because Simon Phoenix got away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, I was guessing that like Listen to our demolition was a big fan episode. of uh, Hitchcock's Vertigo, but I don't think that guy <clears throat> like gets away and murders people or whatever. But that's not how that movie works. No, no that's no. not the story of that movie at all. Yeah. Um. So he's got Vertigo. So like right there, I'm sitting there going like, "Well, the end of this movie is going to get him up yep. into a, a skyscraper said. or something." Yeah. Which they also introduce within the first 20 minutes. I'm telling you, the economy of storytelling. They go to a uh, skyscraper that has malfunctioning robots for no other reason than to set the skyscraper up so it'll be there at the end of the movie. Because we were sitting there going like... These robots. Oh, wait, was that where they were just going up and down the uh, the girders? Like at the end, like yeah, the at the end, yeah. That was at the very end. Yeah, the, the beginning is when they dropped that bag of sand that almost hit yeah, Tom Selleck, that, and yeah, we were like, "Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, convenient." Yeah. yeah, just pushing bags, of sand throwing it off side, like yeah. twenty stories for no reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. they couldn't cut that scene out because they're like, "No, no, no, they have to remember this. This is crucial because this place is going to be important for the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Also important for the end of Three Men and a Baby." <laughs> <laughs> it's all one shared Which universe, one right? Remember the ending of Three Men and a Baby. Yeah, yeah. in in Tom Selleck's construction site. Is there a baby crawling around on a girder that they have to rescue? No, no that's Damn Baby's it. Day Out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> don't worry. The- I knew that happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Baby's Day Out. Don't worry, the baby is safe in a phone booth with Ted Danson. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so Tom Selleck has an interesting home life, which we explore in this film. He has the flight of the navigator kid. He does. At Who is CR a robot? Of, yeah. Apparently. Well, a robot obsessed with his dad with fucking kid. people. Yeah, yeah, it's like, did you obsessed? Yeah, did you, dad, did you fuck her? <laughs> like yeah. that's basically what he asked her. What the he asked whole him movie. When he comes home. The whole movie. No matter where his dad's been, as soon as his dad comes home. So did you fuck her? Basically every fuck, time. Come on, dad. Yeah. You, get, you know, you dad. Come on, get on with your life. Mm-hmm. Like fuck her. Let's because where's I'll, mom? But, but I'll go with that continuity because Tom Selleck's a fucking perv in this movie. So naturally, he, he, learned, he learned it from his dad. Yeah. He learned it from his dad. He did. Yeah. Uh, you know. With the kid or Tom Selleck? The kid learned it from the his dad. From yeah. Tom Selleck, yeah. Because yeah. like Tom Selleck's trying to bone every fucking lady in this movie at some point. Or at least he's like, oh, she's very attractive. Yeah. yeah. He br- uh, he fucking brings his partner home and he's just. Can you 
like, cook? Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. come on. This is that whole, like, uh, wacky, uh, you know, like, he's trying to flirt but doesn't know how. At some point, he's like, yeah, you come back uh, for dinner. And she's like, oh, I'll come back for dinner. And he's like, yeah, take all my partners to dinner. Uh, we'll talk about and the case them. files. And fuck, yeah, I fuck all my partners. This is part well, of the no, job. But, but he, in the scene, he fucks it all up. It's that awkward dating thing. Yes, she has yeah. to actually figure out how to this approach is him. True, at the end but of then the, later on, with Kirsty Alley. Alley, and he's like, "I'll walk you out." And she's like, "No, I'm gonna, I'll walk you he out." He grabs no, her no, arm. I will walk you grabs, out. He grabs, he grabs her, her arm and says, "No, I will walk you out." After she has said yeah, no like three it is, times, it's yeah. like very forceful. Yeah. Very forceful. And he says, Colin. like, over the he's intercom where she Colin. can hear, like, she's very attractive. She can hear that. Yeah. And he says well, that. He's well, very... You, you want her to know that you think she's attractive? No, but he's talking about her like she can't hear him. I know, but that's what's but she funny can. about it, because <laughs> yeah. he's in, you know... But it's not played for comedy. Well, it's right. not... In, the, in this movie, <laughs> looking back, funny. Obviously, because of the obviously... The distance. Uh, the obvious wrong... And the distance and the wrongness yeah. of it, but at that time, you're just... Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. He's not talking okay. about her like she can't hear him even though she can, which right. makes yeah. no sense. It's not okay, man. Mm, well, she's okay. all like this is so Christy <laughs> Alley ends up being she is the uh bad guy's squeeze. Mm-hmm. Was at one point. She gives him up real easy. That she does. Yeah, she's pretty real weak. Easy. Yeah, she's pretty loose. It's like, ah mm-hmm. he made me do it. Mm-hmm. Like right away. Really like, quick. we know she knows why oh, the cops shit. are there. Yeah. Yep. She is in possession of the templates that make the uh, the computer chips. chips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How she got them, I don't know. Why he entrusted Ooh. them to her, I don't know. Maybe he just had to get them away. From they were in the vault. Himself. He made her get them out of the vault. That's what it was. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So this becomes a plot <laughs> point because she's kind of you know like she doesn't really want to be a criminal, but she is, and you know mm-hmm. she's got. He wants the uh, the templates back, so there's hostage situations that take place and. Hey, we got to swap hostages and the the you know, poor. The middle uh, of a crowded dinner at a yeah, restaurant. Well, yeah, don't yeah. That's how you do this. it, yeah, this right? Is, this oh, okay, that's right. Oh, well, and then Gene Simmons this jumps the, off a waterfall and I mean, does not break his ankle, which makes thing. no sense. Like, yeah, this, no, this this whole scene is executed in a way that is so anticlimactic, and it should be a big scene. It should be for yeah. what ends up happening in this. What in happens, this scene. Sean? Well, I mean, they go to uh, what is it? Uh, what, do we pass the Ritz at this point? Like. Oh yeah, we passed. We've over passed the Ritz. The Ritz. Yeah. Like we we've totally gone past the Ritz. Okay, the action scenes of the movie. Right, so the, right, the, the, the big yeah. action stuff right. in this because they go to There's the they, chase scene with the magic bullet. Then there was the right. Ritz, and then we get to the Ritz, yeah. which is like they have figured out where is because Kirstie Alley tells them where they're going to be, where he's going to um, be. Yes. I think so. Kirstie Alley tells them where there's a meeting going on where like Gene Simmons is going to, you know. Hang out with other with the bad buyers. dudes, mm-hmm. right? With the buyers yeah. who are going to buy the microchips yeah. to do all this stuff, and so the police surround the area. It always feels like this is way too easy. The police surround the area, and they're just like, "Yeah, we're ready to go and everything." We've been waiting for you, Sarge. Get in. Yeah, there. and yeah. and nobody else has any idea what's going on. So then they end up like charging in and trying to uh, apprehend Gene Sims and everything, and this leads to like an action scene where you know. Uh, there's a shootout with his. Uh, are you saying action gun? quotes? Are you actually meaning? <laughs> I, I I feel like a every action question. scene is in quotes in this movie. I mean, but I'm not sure if Sean meant it. Well, or like this is the highlight of the film where Tom well, Selleck is to, busting into it. There's shots fired. There's smoke in the room. People let's are say, jumping over I will say, the divan. Uh, I will say legitimate action <laughs> action scene for a 1984 movie. Okay. Uh, for us, it's something else. But for 1984, like, drop your piece, uh, Ramsey. Otherwise, basically I'll shoot is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So they burst in on like Gene Simmons and his and his uh, dealings that are going yeah. on, and so and the uh, topless girl next door. Yeah, yeah. this is PG thirteen. PG thirteen, and 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 Tom Selleck, TV star, got to say fuck. Fuck, he in a did. PG he said movie. fuck. He did. Oh yeah, it was liberating. It was PG thirteen rating in this movie, which is you know how liberating was it? Was movie ratings back in the day <laughs> where you could just do this shit? So I have to be very careful when I show my son. I know PG-13 it's like this PG thirteen. You're fine. It's like, wait, oh shit, PG thirteen. Oh, what's in this movie? Yeah, how are the duck is G and has duck boobs and in the opening boobs. scene? So I would not. Yeah. Watch like, out! Yeah, you yeah, can watch the duck. You know movie. what? You're gonna have like, to. No, like, you can't watch the duck movie. You're gonna have to screen stuff before yeah, you, you can't show watch it. Uh, yeah. in the 1980s. Yeah. No, you can't yeah. watch anything. Mm-hmm. No, no. I, or you yeah. can. 
You, well, gonna, I can. Okay. You can. You're going to have yeah. to watch it first yeah. before you show it to everything. him. Yeah. Never did I think I would have to go back and like, I need to rewatch Howard the Duck just yeah, to see just if to my be, kid can watch it again. No, Dude, that movie's so sexual. It's so gross. Very, so very sexual. I don't, I, I don't think sexual. anyone should rewatch Howard the yeah, Duck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? Just forget that movie exists. Put it away. Uh, Leah Thompson you know deserves better. Tim Robbins deserves better. I can't forget about Howard the Duck. There's too many elements, too many people in it. When was the last time you watched it? Oh, it's been a while. Yep, that there you but go. But I remember everything. About You'll put it on. You'll get twenty minutes in and be like, "Wow, this is trash." And yeah, turn I'm it gonna off. go ahead and say yep. my official freak show pass on how. Yeah, exactly. Pass, pass, yeah. Pass. Oh, that's, the, that's the veto. Yeah. That's the fucking. Yeah, you're putting the black chip yeah. in. Yeah. Come through a telescope. Yeah. With the fuck end. that on. movie. I hate them. No, right. fuck that. Yeah, I, I, I will. If, yeah. if that right. ever gets picked, I will be sick for th- I sick in quotes for that episode. Be fuck that movie. Yeah, fuck that movie. All right, we'll bring us home on on Runaway here. Oh yeah, where? So we're in the. Uh, the so we're in the hotel, hotel and then shit goes off and everybody's yeah. like coming in on Gene Sims and everything. And so Tom Selleck and his partner, uh, it's Karen, right? Thompson. Thompson. Karen Thompson. <laughs> yep. Played by the great Cynthia Rhodes, who was in Penny from Dirty Dancing. Staying alive. <laughs> Flash dance. There you go. <laughs> we, we no, that's all, that's it. That's we named all the that's things. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. We named all the things. And so, like, he comes in, but he's you know he's got a hostage, so he's got to like shoot his way out of this thing, and he's got his future gun. Yep. Um, which uh, Tom Selleck has in the poster for this movie, but never uses. Yep. Right. For whatever reason, it's weird. Well, the the cool thing about this scene is that uh, I mean I know that Gene Simmons jumps the waterfall, doesn't break his ankle, and sure, gets away but before that. Well, no, that's that's the. Ritz scene. Yeah. That's, or that's the... Uh, uh, that's later on. This is the Ritz scene. This is the Ritz scene. before that. But the partner gets one of these magic oh, bullets yeah, like, the in her arm. exploding bullets. Yeah. And this uh, allows us to have this tender moment between... This is the moment that the chemistry really happens between mm-hmm. uh, 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 Magnum P.I. and his partner. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to lie. I do like this scene. He has to pull the bullet that could explode at any minute. I agree with Sean. I like the scene. I like the scene. This is the best acting in the whole movie. It It is between the two of them and that. It is. Everyone's doing really good in this scene. Mm -hmm. It's just between the two of them. He's got to extract the bullet, or he has decided to extract the bullet from her because they bring in a robot to do it. But which that looked like Johnny Five. It It did. It did. It It looked like first generation Johnny Five. Yeah. Yeah, But Tom Selleck has been doing this long enough to know what robot. Like the robot's not. It's you can't trust that robot to do this. Because his partner's going to lose like, her arm. Damn you, Lieutenant Harris from Police Academy. Die. I'm doing it myself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so, like, he decides to take it upon himself and be like, you know what? I'm going to get in there and do it and just get this done. And so it's a great scene between the two. Um, it, uh, I, I feel... I feel the pain she's feeling in this yeah. scene. Like this is yeah, she was good. Well, she may have been doing the really childbirth good. kind of. It was the but director. It works. It Crichton's works. like just pretend like you're giving birth. Mm-hmm. I think that's it's a good motivation for this scene. It's a scene that was always memorable to me as watching this when I was younger. She, but if you remember, I'm sorry, going back to Dirty Dancing, if you remember that <laughs> scene when she had her like back alley abortion, she does pain well. Mm-hmm. She's done this before. This was in Dirty Dancing. Maybe this was yeah. the audition scene. I need to watch scene. Dirty Dancing. Yeah, again she had like I... a back alley abortion, and uh, she and it did not go well, and she's no, in a lot I of can't pain. Imagine it would be. And so she plays pain well. Hmm. I think she does it well. Maybe she that was the audition scene. Maybe, maybe, but she does. Do she, you want to part and run away? Pretend like you're getting a bullet pulled out of your arm. Yeah. <laughs> the sweat on her looked realistic. It, well, it's it, was, yeah. it was the beating. It was the beating sweat we talked about. But it looked realistic, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was running down his face. Yeah. As he yeah. Was yeah. It was, because yeah. yeah. it dripped down oh, off yeah. his, yeah. His, good his, stuff. Very, his nice chin. It looked very real, though. It like, did. You know, it was dead. a very good scene between them. Yeah. I, f- I felt what she felt getting a bullet taken out of her arm. Yeah. Yeah. They do this... Um, they shoot this very well, because it's not just based on the reactions of the actors. There is a... Uh, a move away to uh, like the camera image. that shows the yeah. X-ray image yeah. of the bullet being taken. out. I was out. wondering how they were doing that because that was pretty. That was effective. It's pretty good. You it get was. To see the tweezers going yeah. in. Yeah, and, and it's not just a, a clean pull out. Like mm-hmm. he goes for it a little bit, and then it like he it, loses like goes it. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He loses yeah. It and it goes in, and like you feel that. Yeah. I think that added a lot to that scene. Right, I'll second you that that's the best thing in the movie. It, is. it might be the yeah, best thing in the movie. Like I really enjoyed it. It's like playing Operation when you like almost get the piece up, and then you're like about to touch the side, so you drop the piece, and then you have to go back down in and pull it up again. Like that's what yeah, because he knows that this thing has not detonated so he's got to be so meticulously careful to pull it out he can't do it too hard Mm. yeah and so i I feel it is i feel her pain in this scene and he he ends up finally getting out of there 
uh, after an uh, excruciating scene, and he throws it into the bar. Which, mm-hmm. okay, as good as this scene is, it's kind of bullshit that he throws it into a bar and nothing catches on fire or explodes. Everything he is literally in throws movie. it into alcohol, yeah. and nothing <laughs> yeah. catches on fire. Yeah. When Which everything should. else in this movie sparks and catches on fire like crazy. Yeah, really should. Well, and the uh, entire police force, like, you know, evacuates to I don't know the like other it, end like of the it hotel. Yeah, floor yeah, it's going, whoa, 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 we gotta yeah. get out of the. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of like that scene between Riggs and Murtaugh. With the, That's what like, I was thinking. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, a whole floor. Maybe should that be, ripped yeah. off it felt like runaway a weapon scene. Yes. That's what it yeah. felt like it should have been. Uh, there was also a high tension uh, action scene that took place on a highway with a bunch of oh, futuristic yeah. uh, heads up uh, mm. uh, right. uh, screens inside of a car. Yeah, in the back. One Did it feel front. high tension? I didn't care for that scene, honestly. <laughs> uh, I well, think it. Was, they're being uh, pursued by the. Uh, <clears throat> anybody ever seen Bullet? Right, where there's yeah. the remote yeah. control mm-hmm. car. Yeah. So imagine like, like a whole bunch of uh, remote control cars, uh, robots being uh, sent one, down yes. the highway. Mm-hmm. To attack your car, but they've got the uh, the Johnny Cab driver from Total mm-hmm. Recall mm-hmm. right piloting because this is a police robot car where you right. don't drive it yourself. You have uh, like a, a mannequin in the hi- in the driver's seat. Mm-hmm. Why you need a mannequin See, if way- it's all remote controlled? I don't know. Well, you can whatever. no, but you, it's not remote controlled. You remake it. It's like one of those driverless Uber cars or whatever. Right? Sure. That's what it would be now. The Tesla like pilot. Uh, I still cars. I still like the uh, the uh, Demolition Man like. The steering wheel yeah. that expands and yep. yeah, you goes can in. take yeah. control. Yeah, or AI, Demolition Man, right? Demolition the, Man did this movie better. I think AI it did. Re- yeah, Minority better. Report. Well, Minority it. Report did the Spider Bites better. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. sure, sure. Well, but it yeah. had CGI in its. Well, you know, it's, well, it had that advantage. But yeah. If well, maybe if, you need CGI to pull off decent uh, maybe, Spider maybe, Bites. Maybe you don't. You like the Spider Bots in this over? I'm uh, saying, can we do Spider Bots in the era of the uh, of, of now of now oh, and do it better? Eh, maybe than, than the CGI of challenge to you, Hollywood. Sean is <laughs> we throwing can. down the fucking gauntlet right here tonight on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, one of you dare pick it up. They won't. <laughs> <laughs> a, no one's listening. B, Practical they won't. <laughs> robot effects. Uh, so yeah, those are explosive robots chasing this car down the highway. Which I like. I like the idea of this. We're just like mini robots. That are, if you're gonna do a chase, it's a good chase scene because you're just sending off exploding robots to follow your car and blow it up. It's not a bad idea. No, like it's the not idea, a bad idea. The, the idea is sound. <laughs> yeah, I would say because there's a track. If nothing else, the idea is sound on the person. Yes, and that is how the robots are finding them. This yes. is a lesson that possibly the last Jedi could have learned. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah. then, there's also a big climactic action scene where hostages are taken, namely the flight of the navigator. He's abducted from his home. Do we his- talk about the the? We still haven't talked about the restaurant. No, we haven't talked no, about the restaurant. The restaurant. This, You're right. That was different. Yeah, For some yeah. reason, I imagine you, it going you, you directly both, from yeah. the hotel to the restaurant, yeah, the outdoor no, restaurant by the waterfall, where the hostages are this, exchanged. It's because there this, are a few action scenes. It's because this is a pivotal scene that does not feel that way. That's why the, the restaurant scene. Could yeah. you? Yeah, it doesn't. Could you imagine eating? You're just eating your dinner in a restaurant, and some dude pulls a gun. From one side of the restaurant, points it at a guy at the other side, and you don't notice, right? Like no one in the restaurant notices, like right. Well, I mean, it was a future gun. Doesn't notice because I'm just like, "Mm -hmm." but it was a future gun, and it kind of looked like a tiny little uh, Samsonite briefcase. Yeah, basically. Or maybe it's a gun with a Samsonite briefcase attached as the magazine. It feels like right. It is yes. But I mean, imagine being well. A, this is the hostage yeah. switch, and this yeah. is a full restaurant. Like every full table is full. This is, full yeah. this is the full outside restaurant that you only see in movies from the eighties and nineties. I, I don't. I don't things. see this. No, it's on it like a exist. terrace that is on the edge of a waterfall. It may exist in uh, Vancouver or California or yeah. wherever this those is supposed the, to be. Those might be like the only two places. It doesn't I, exist I could see Vegas having a restaurant like that. Vegas might. Yeah, New York doesn't. Chicago doesn't. It's it's uh, Vegas, You're just not invited, LA, Sean. And That's what's going on. They're all over the place in Chicago. There, yeah, this I'll is the kind it. of restaurant that would be outside, like the Metropolitan Museum of Art or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. You have to be in the desert where, where it is, doesn't rain all the time. Exactly. Like you That's have what I'm those saying, where it's the, from it's brick the where they have outdoor lockers. Yes. Yep. Only in places where the temperature is the same. That's all what I'm saying. Like 
quote unquote no rain. Yeah, Whoa. some some resort in Vegas I could see having this restaurant where it's like sit right next to a fucking waterfall I mean, and eat we, your steak. We do have you know outdoor seating at restaurants. Yeah, well, it's not. Well, yeah, we of. do, but it's just you know this whole restaurant's outdoors. It looks like though, you know, it's, like that's the weird part because. There's like, like 50 hotels. tables like, it's a really outside. Fancy outdoor restaurant space. Mm-hmm. That's and you the can only weird get part. That fancy if you're only in that temperature. In that all temperate year climate, long. yeah. 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 It's just, temperate climate, yeah. It's just odd and doesn't really make sense. If I'm being honest. I, like it's I said, I, I, I am bothered. But they have controlled the weather in the future. No, they haven't. Right? Stop yeah, it. No, we don't know that. Yeah. That's right. We don't know that. I am, I am more bothered by the fact that he jumps off that fucking waterfall and is unscathed. You know? Yeah. Like, because they, they show that the water, at the or the, the depth at the bottom of the waterfall is like, what, like two feet? It's so not, he, it's, not it's not deep. He jumps onto his feet onto like the base of that waterfall. So like that had to have fucking hurt. I'm more disturbed mm. by these people who are sitting there having a nice meal. And they look over and watch Kirstie Alley get stabbed in the back of the head and dropped and, in a fountain. And think nothing of it. Yep. And just go back to their their appetizers. I've Do you think we're? Well, there were a lot like of people running down. around at that point. They may not have seen that. Yeah, it did seem edited. It seemed cut down. Yeah, yeah. Like there was that, more to that. That scene needed to be bigger. Because Duder just well, gets away. Like, Do you think he that does. was to get the PG thirteen? I think so. Yeah. I think there was more to that scene. It, felt it had like there was to have been right. Mm-hmm. And they cut it down just Didn't to get this rating. Even like the build up to it, it wasn't enough. Mm-hmm. No, it just there should have been. I don't know, it was more. music, maybe music bad wise, editing, yeah. or what have you. But like something. I said, that's one of those instances where the time, all the timing in this movie was just off. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was put together the best way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the hostage exchange because right. Gene Simmons somehow comes into uh, he he, acqui- it's the he, he acqui- well yeah he acquires the uh, Thompson. Uh, Karen Thompson. Yep. Mm-hmm. He acquires. He sits her. down at the table with her and is like, yeah. Are you listening to me, Ramsey? Yeah, she loaned um, me yeah. her earpiece so you can hear me. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And so there's the hostage exchange because he's looking for the templates. Yeah. So what? That's right. He needs Christy Alley back so he can get the templates. She splits them in half right. and gives half my insurance policy. policy. Mm-hmm. So this gives the movie like a th- uh, third act where he uh, Gene Simmons has to abduct uh, Tom Selleck's kid. Right. And demand basically I'll trade you the kid for the rest of the uh the, the templates. Right. So this takes place on the the skyscraper where we know that Tom Selleck's character is gonna have a problem with the height, right? Because yep. there's a crazy open air elevator that is uh has a setting for human speed <laughs> or up. Yep. Right. And then it has a uh, it malfunctions at some point because they always do. And it shoots up to the top of the uh, escalator, yeah, and or the ladder or whatever you would call it, and it has a reset button that is located somehow underneath the carriage, like you do. Well, I mean, you don't want it where anyone can reach it, you know? Why right. would you? To reset this thing, you have to crawl outside of it. Well, I suppose there was supposed to be a, a hatch that you right, reach out. Right, but spiders came. But the spiders get up there, and so he has to, you know, there's. All of these, um, I was going to say sack tightening, but you don't like that. So uh, <laughs> stomach curdling moments where yeah. Tom, stomach so dropping. There's other uh, yeah. stomach yeah. dropping. Yeah. Stop referring to that. Area. <laughs> yeah, ah, the sack tightening. Sack tightening. <laughs> Uh, where he is dangling from the Don't other side. Yeah, no, think, <laughs> can we one hand is dangling. <laughs> He's swinging this in the breeze under dangling event yep. that happens in this Stop movie. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> and these little spider robots are trying to stick him with a, the their their venom, which I suppose in this case is acid, which <laughs> gets on his face and like burns the living oh, yeah. shit out of him. He's like, no, no, don't worry. I don't need it's to go fine. out and anything. I'll take it's fine. It's acid like, burning my yeah. face. I'll be fine. Be yeah. scarred. How does Gene Simmons uh, meet his eventual demise? He stands on a specific floor. Creepily. With a Gl- uh, glower on his face and <laughs> just waits and hopes for the elevator to come he down. Really, it really is because the best <laughs> He's thing just about movies there. like this is to think about what yeah. your villains are doing in the meantime, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, if, if yeah. you don't have that, that means it's a badly written. Yeah, character. he's just Correct. standing there, glowering, like, waiting yeah. for the elevator to come down. Don't have a plan past this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have yeah. to wait for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that about his character all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so he waits for Tom. So the robots on the ground floor, the spider patrols, are basically they're going to kill the first person who comes out of the elevator, mm-hmm. and of course it's engineered so somehow <clears throat> uh, the kid. Tom Selleck, his partner, mm-hmm. Karen Thompson, 
are all there at this uh, event. And Gene Simmons is thrown off and ends up being the first person to land. And irony of ironies, he is the victim of his own robots. His own spider Of course, yeah. yep. It's like that scene in Lion King where Scar gets, like, you know, thrown off and the hyenas attack him. Yeah, it's like, there you go. It's like that. Yep. Mm-hmm. It is just the like that. You're the victim of your own <laughs> shit. But at least this is a <laughs> gateway. Like this whole episode is a gateway to the blossoming romance that takes place the whole between. Thing? I think so, you know, yeah. when you think about it, because Tom Selleck has lost his is. wife. Right? I would say calling their romance is a stretch. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's uh, attempts, I think, on both sides. Missed signals. You know, she's like, you know, we, we're going to go back and have dinner. No, it's like, okay. So at the end of the movie, they're going to have dinner, mm-hmm. like, as a couple. Only if she can cook it, apparently. Yeah. Well, yeah. the guy has had Lois, the robot, cooking from for the last two yeah, years. Yeah, but apparently all she makes is hot dogs, so she sucks anyways. She That's made what pasta, I'm Michaela. That's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> but he, but he was chastising he her for making hot dogs. <laughs> well, he had invited her over, and he was going to cook. But mm-hmm. apparently it's like, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing because... I eat hot dogs all the time and pasta. And Lois is dead, so and yeah, Lois. That's right. Lois got fucking blown up she by uh, blown Gene up. Simmons. Yeah, before she could go all smart house on his family. Yeah. God damn it! What a what a tease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank God that Thompson can uh, can uh, you know. Yeah. Find thank God because he's not a grown man who can do things for himself. Yeah. Well, he's got a kid to look after and all this stuff. Yeah. That's all the more reason he out. should cook. <laughs> all the more reason he should know how to cook. He should be able to cook. The man knows uh, robotics. Uh, he knows robotics. He and yet, and yet he cannot figure out cooking? I mean, I'm not going to say <laughs> that on. there's... I won't say that there, there is There's a not, correlation, right? There. Right. No, you can know a lot about this one thing, and you That's can be true. a deficit in a certain area. That's true. I, that is It's not hard to follow thing. the back of a can box, though. Can he make though. a sandwich? Well, you would be surprised. You'd be surprised, yeah. Can he make a goddamn sandwich? Yeah. Can he order a pizza? Yeah. Take well, care of your cooking. shit. Yeah, it's not cooking, though, yeah. I don't care. It's not her responsibility to take care of him. Yeah. I'm not saying, right. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying it is. Yeah. He but thinks it is. He's, the first thing yeah. he says is, can uh, you cook? So, yeah, but not as a response. Okay. So <laughs> it's a happy ending to the movie and happy the my credits ass. roll. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll tell you what. He Luke should can. not depend on her to cook. No, yes. no, no obviously. he shouldn't. I don't think that is the case. Okay, so the what we're going to do. He clearly wants her to fill the lowest void. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. My wife's that, dead. That is my what robot's wants. dead. I need you to cook for I me. I need yeah. you to take care of. Fuck yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Tom Selleck. Right. God damn it, Tom so, Selleck. I thought you were better in this. <laughs> So what we're going to do, uh, <laughs> listener, is we're going to go around the room and we're going to tell you what we thought individually of Runaway and if you should watch it, if you can find it, which we did. So it's on Amazon yeah, streaming. it's available. Yep. But first of all, we want to uh, entertain you by reading your own comments back to you. You're going to love this part of the show. It's called Igor's Mailbag. We're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's got fucking spider bots all over him. God, yeah, but damn they're it. like his pets, though. Like he's controlling. <laughs> Do they have acid, though? So we're saying it's not a hygiene so. issue. It's okay. just kind of, you know, oh, no, you track. He, like, they're his minions. Yeah. Well, he's, he oh, 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 oh. Maybe he's they're like in charge the of the mail. Oh, look, they're bringing yeah. you a letter. Oh, look, oh shit. Look, yeah, look at this. They're bringing you a little letter. All right. All well, right, we should also. Thing away. Before I read this, we should tell the fine folks at home how they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram. At Sad Freak Show. Or we're Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, So about our previous episode, Fear. Mm. Sea Huds writes in. Sea Huds. What up, Chuds? He says that uh, Pain and Gain is probably Marky Mark's best movie. It's also The Rock's best movie. I'm going to watch this movie. Possibly Michael Bay's best movie. Best movie. He (laughs) says I'd have to rewatch Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2 to how they stack up. So apparently... Pain and gain. I you haven't know, seen it. A lot, of, a lot of people whose opinion I respect have said that about that movie. So that makes me think I need I've, to watch it. I've yeah. Seen it. I've yeah, heard I've, that. Yeah, I've heard a lot either. of good things about it, though. And I've heard good things about it as well. Like, What's I Michael Bay's best movie? movie? I'll give it a shot. That you've seen. I don't I like uh, I like Bad Boys too. I'm I like, a fan yeah, I of that too. movie. I, I, mean, I know what it is. I I, know I can't even think of more than like three Michael Bay movies. Well, thirteen hours was his also. Oh, probably that one then. 
Okay, but you're looking for like the dramatic stuff. I'm going to say Transformers is Michael Bay's best movie because that is the perfect marriage between a filmmaker's sensibility and subject matter. Wait, you're yeah. you're saying that about Transformers? The first one? Because well, I'm saying like he is stupid and the movie is stupid and it's perfect, <laughs> right? Perfect match. Like no He's one else dumb. could have done Transformers dumb. except Michael Bay. It was Bay. meant to it be. Was meant to be. Uh, Wayne Lustig writes in and says, "Fear is one of my favorite movies." That's a good one, man. I dig uh, it. Zemer twenty seven writes in and he says, "Dear Saturday Night Freak <laughs> Show, mm. I have a friend who works at the Schomburg IKEA." Oh, and shit. I asked him about the sexy <laughs> oh netting. My God! And he was not that confused or unsettled by my request. So, Sean, I think you would be Woo! solid by going in and asking for it. They would make something work for you. Oh, this might be my favorite mailbag wow. ever. Well, <laughs> it's so specific, and I love that you went out of your way is. to ask That's your friend amazing. about it. I love it. Rest oh, assured, God. Sean is not in possession of the sexy netting. It no, it's is. all good. I still may yeah. make a trip just based on your your mail in right now. That that's, that's amazing. So great. I love that. It's amazing. <laughs> I like that they were not disturbed by it either. Yeah, like yeah. the people that work at IKEA have seen everything. Yeah, they're just like, oh, they've seen oh, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sexy yeah, level three, over in, level yeah. three. Uh -huh. Yeah, go around the corner, get past the floor vogs, and <laughs> yeah. you, you just got to figure out the uh, Swedish name. Yeah, right? sure. <laughs> it's called a flurg. You'll the see flurg. it. Yeah, You'll the flurg. Um, yeah, the flurg. Yeah, the flurg. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow, I was not expecting that. That was a great that's piece of amazing. mail. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Thank good. you. I appreciate it. Brent Zemecki writes in, and he guys he says, You guys weren't kidding. The Anaconda and Fear reviews were great. Yeah. Pretty he says, good. This won't play well over the internet radio, but just in case you missed it, check out the trailer for The Meg, starring Jason oh, Statham. Yeah. Oh, we've checked it out. Oh, yeah. We were I'm all going up to on see it. that movie. We um, are. Oh, that's going to be a freak show. Freak show field trip. Yeah, yeah, Stay tuned. Then, right? Yes. Like after Deep Blue Sea, there's the Meg. We did the math, oh, and it's Holly's week. It's my Sean week. Sean is happening. holding up his fucking head. What? What? Am I the only one who could give a shit about this movie? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right, I'm the only one who could give a shit Sean, about this movie. <laughs> Sean, it's a $150 million Megadon movie. That's a lot of money. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. don't you want to go see it now? Sean, Rain Wilson is in this movie. Yes. I know. And there's that element. Didn't you makes bring you Deep Blue Sea? I did. You no, did. did. Okay. Yeah. It was like... I saw the trailer. I'm like, I could give it one hundred fifty million but, uh, dollars. Why does this movie cost one hundred fifty? Exactly. That's exactly. That's why, why we need to find it. out. This right. is yeah. ridiculous. I, now, if there's and a, a major a, studio, if there's a freak show field trip, I will go. Yeah, it's gonna be a freak yeah. show field right trip. Right now, I'm just like. Why do I care about this it movie? It yeah. falls on so, Holly's week. So so we, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. But I don't give a shit about this movie over right now. To the, I don't give the a shit. ironic side. That's yeah. fine. That, that movie called The Meg. Maybe I'll get to yeah. the ironic side. But right St now, St I don't give a shit. Statham and a giant shark and Rain Wilson. You're not sold. Still don't give a shit. What? You're not sold on don't that. Don't give a shit. Yeah. All right. So I'm I'm the one who needs to be convinced of this movie. Okay. Right now, yeah. right, we'll work on it. But thank you, listener. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I want to read right up our alley. I want to read the books. Well, he says that yeah. the books are schlocky, fun, and the movie looks to be, too. He uh, also says, hopefully this catches on as a terrible sign-off, but freak show forever. Forever. I mean, forever. 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 Forever, ever? Like, forever? Like, like, and ever, ever? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, song. Ever, yes. ever? <laughs> I should have read it as freak show for Eva. And be like, what? It's okay. For yeah. Eva? Who's Eva? <laughs> all right, so this is the moment that you've all been waiting for because you've wanted to know what we thought of Runaway since you started this an hour and 12 minutes ago. Colin! <laughs> <laughs> what, what comes? Oh, yes. You be silent for like four seconds at a time. <laughs> the spider bat's got him. <laughs> Colin, what did you think about Runaway? All right, so here we go. The year is 1984. There's, like, amazing technology. It's uh, surprising to me that in an age where HAL 9000 exists, right, in the movies, that somehow the, they weren't able to envision, like, artificial intelligence in this movie, like, at all, really. I mean, Lois has some, but it's not... Uh, 
you're still the way that I think they looked at, at, at computers and computer, you know, it's all programming and like the thing mm. spitting, you know, it's not thinking for itself, which is the idea of, you know, somewhat of the, the idea of artificial intelligence, which, you know, 1968, right? This is 50 years from 2001 and they had figured that out. So it does. And even, I suppose, the way that Crichton thought about his, uh, you know, androids in Westworld was the same way. It's like they weren't really intelligent the 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 new show the hbo show is yeah. more going into that but it's kind of like they have these series of commands to execute and that's what they do and then you know maybe it gets scrambled and they go wrong and this movie is like they're not going wrong they're actually being programmed to kill that's the you know like the from the man who brought you west where i haven't watched the trailer but i'm sure that's it <laughs> from the man who brought you west world where technology went wrong comes another cautionary tale runaway starring magnum pi's tom Selleck. they weren't that forth thinking in making that trailer <laughs> <laughs> well they had to be right they had to know that this was the guy who made west world no, which is a big hit i didn't and know no they didn't have to, to be what right. year was west world uh, probably ten years earlier than the seventy four. Jesus, maybe? no, it was seventies. No. Yeah. yeah, no, they did. They yeah, were but it not would be a name thinking. that. Well, uh, yeah, we, like we said, we haven't watched the trailer, and it's from a different company, uh, so I they may not. The trailer it. has no mention of any of that. I'm betting too, because it's a Columbia. This is a Columbia movie that was a MGM movie. The um, <clears throat> the whole I don't know it. I had. I don't know if that I had really a fun. It was fun again watching it with the the folks here tonight at the freak show. But I don't think that I would have had fun with this movie uh, on my own because the science fiction science fiction is I think my hardest genre to come to grips with because when you do it wrong, especially when you're doing like futuristic prognostication right mm. from the past, and you get it wrong, you go one of two ways where either it's like holy shit they they kind of you know they got that they're a little bit off but you know or you go into the they missed it so by su such a wide margin that it's you know amusing to see how they saw the future and i think this one felt to me more on that level um i mean i asked a question earlier would it play better as a book i think it would because if i read that book now I would read into it the technology that we have now. Mm -hmm. I think seeing it as a film literalizes it and makes it a time capsule of 1984. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just didn't really, I didn't get into it. The bad guy's motivation was like, eh, okay. I mean, as you were explaining, I'm like, yeah, I guess that's it. But he just seemed like a two dimensional yeah. cartoon villain to me who glowers all the time. And, you know, I was like, okay. It just didn't seem like he existed in the real world, which mm -hmm. I guess we were talking about. Um, and the relationships between the characters felt like they weren't really going above and beyond. These are kind of like the stock 1980s, you know, uh, family dynamics that you kind of set into place with all of these movies. I mean, that's why movies like Lethal Weapon, when you saw them, were like, that. this is a fucking classic because they subverted and, you know, that... Uh, you know, the buddy cop dynamic or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, because it wasn't like everything else that was being done before. This one is like, eh, you can like, make a sci fi yeah. channel movie that this would be it, you know, it's got an okay budget. But you know, the other thing that strikes me about these things when you're watching is like now movies are production designed like to the end of the ninth yeah. degree. And back in the eighties, they're like, well, we got a building with downtown we're going to go shoot in this apartment building. We got an alley. We're going to go shoot in it. It's more like what life looks like, I suppose. But now it's like, because we've been accustomed to looking at all these things that look better. Uh, it's kind of like, eh, especially in science fiction, I guess, you know, and not to say that I like like the I robot um, production design, you know, where it's, too designed this is like not designed enough there's not enough robots in this movie True. there's not enough technology in True. this movie for real and i guess that's the, why you're kind of there to see it so um at least robocop made the robot cop the central hmm. piece you know all yeah. the other technology didn't need to be as you know because there was a fucking robot cop walking around yeah um so i don't know i think i would pass on uh, runaway uh, you don't need to see this one, according to me. Michaela, what do you think? I agree, Colin. I think there is not enough robots, not enough action. There's a lot of cop walking and talking. Yep. Um, but it's not interesting walking and talking. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty boring. You can check out during most of it and still not miss really anything. Right. Um, 
yeah, this movie, I had seen it before, and I remember how ridiculous the robot design was, but, like, the robots are barely in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. When they're in it, it's hilarious and delightful, but when they're not in it, it's like, how much, like, okay, Tom Selleck is doing the same thing on TV now that he was doing in this movie in the 80s. Like, yeah. like he, he's got yeah, one thing, and it is cop walking and talking, and that is it. Uh, I, it I, could have been Indiana Jones once. Let's not forget that. Uh, how would that audition have been? tape. Ooh, really? I need to watch this. I, think, yeah, I they, need to watch this. Ooh, yeah. I want to watch that. I took one note during this whole movie, <laughs> and it was my favorite part in this movie. That's why I wrote it down. There's a part where they, like, like in every, like, 80s and 90s movie, like, the, like, waiting room in a police station is full of just, like, people being ready to be booked, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, they've all, they all had this moment. But, like, there's, like, a, clearly a prostitute in there. And she is trying to convince everyone she's an exercise instructor. Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, and she's trying to convince Tom Selleck that she's not guilty. She's an exercise instructor. And Sex he's, worker. Yeah. And he's, like, he's saying that, like, I don't have time for this. And then she calls him a wiener head. <laughs> 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 and she yells it. She's, like, she- she like. really does. <laughs> Best part she in the whole really movie. really does. I was surprised. Yeah. However, <laughs> uh, that being said, it's not worth watching just to see that. I would I would give a hard pass to run away. It is just mm. too much slowness and mm-hmm. walking and talking in between to make it worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, no, I am on the same page as you guys. I, I feel like this movie is definitely... Um, we talk about we talk a lot about um, like a time period t- uh, time capsule. This, well, you know, with um, the wraith, it was a very much a time capsule of of its time, and this also is, but in the opposite way, not the great way. It's the boring capsule. All this stuff you don't want to remember. Yeah, yeah. 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 talk about right. the fucking horrid electronic score. Oh God, uh, yes. J- uh, I was gonna say, I don't even yeah. remember it. It's just. Oh, it's Exit a in my brain. Yeah. yeah, but it's, it's Jerry it's, Goldsmith. It's, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's go- it's yeah. synthesizer it's all over the place. Yeah, it's bad. Um, yeah, at the end of the movie, they thank Yamaha for the electronic instruments. Yeah. Of course they, they do. Did. They did. You guys were upstairs. I that. I that. You guys were upstairs. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Bravo. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Uh, this has this has a, a, a that eighties blandness that that so many of these of these shitty movies have. Um, it was it just wasn't interesting enough. It didn't hold my attention. The robots were funny when they were there, but it wasn't enough for me. It didn't have the action sequences weren't action packed. They didn't have that that drive to them. Um, it just wasn't exciting at all. Um, and the characters were just, they were just bland and no one had dimension. Even like, you know, you were saying, you know, everyone was, everything was set up in this movie to pay off later. That may be true, but it felt like it was every, it was just so basic. Everything was so basic. Um, so yeah, it just, it didn't follow, it didn't follow through on anything that I wanted from it at all. Um, I, I'm going to be a little afraid of the robotics lab at school on Monday. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. As you should. But I, I don't I don't think I can recommend. It just it didn't hit those points that I needed it to hit to be entertaining. So pass on Runaway. Sean, bring us home. Oh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a movie that's limited by I, it's a movie that's limited by its technology. I don't think it's able to, uh, as you said, bring us home mm-hmm. on its technology because it's it's the it's I mean it's 1984. I don't think it has the ability to do that mm-hmm. um, with the technology that is available. Um, I think that uh, the things I enjoyed about this movie. I think Tom Selleck does. Um, uh, I think he does a very good job in this he's movie. Very Tom uh, he's very Tom Selleck. He's very Tom Selleck. Like <laughs> I don't think I think Tom Selleck he is plays a very, Tom Selleck very he does. well. He does. I think he's a very good actor, and maybe in only that he is doing Tom Selleck very well, but like he, I, I believe him in this movie. Like I think he's doing a very good job and I salute him for that. Um, the technology of this time, if you're going to make a movie about like runaway robots, the technology of this time does not lend itself to that, to be something that is crazy enough to make a movie about, I guess. Cause you know, it seems very tame, like, uh, uh runaway technology. Uh, uh, a robot that's going through a cornfield <laughs> that you have to capture. Be like, 
Yeah. Yay. Well, the idea of a robot was like, I mean, Johnny Five. Yeah. Was yeah. Like that, was, that was the next year. Yeah. yeah. The Terminator was this year. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're saying the ones that we so, remember. So yeah. we're, we're still developing the yeah. idea of a robot of that technology at this point. And I don't think that this movie quite gets that. The extremes of what you can do with that technology, it doesn't get it across. Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately. Um, I remember watching, I watched this movie uh, a few times as a kid. And that, I mean, that's really the reason I brought it back for the freak show now is because I always, there were certain scenes I remembered uh, of this movie, especially the, the bullet uh, extraction scene. That was mm-hmm. a big one for me. I Good always scene. felt that was, that was a big thing for me. Um, certain scenes are done, I think, very well. Um, that being one of them. I like Tom Selleck. Um, I, 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 I mean, I think he's a good actor. Um, he pulls it off during this movie throughout. Um, but it doesn't like, I don't think it elevates the movie above kind of like the ordinary shit you would see during the 1980s. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a thing, but, uh, I yeah. Feel like, I feel like Gene Simmons should have been easier to kill. I don't, I don't know. Like, Gene I don't Simmons know why they like, couldn't like, kill him. I don't know. There's a lot yeah. of open shots. Like, yeah. I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me. <laughs> yep. There's a, there's a lot of questions. I wanted more from him movie. as a bad guy. Maybe he should, maybe he should have been more menacing. He does, I think he does his best. This is early He's on. He's not his, given a lot, you know? Maybe. Yeah. He's, this is early on in his quote unquote acting career. Yeah. So uh, he does his best with his eyes in mm-hmm. being an actor in this movie. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is, uh, I don't recommend this movie because it doesn't, elevate beyond something that you know is crazy enough to go see so Mm -hmm. i mean there's there's good elements of this movie but you know it's not uh it's not quite out there enough to recommend so um i like the movie but you know oh i don't think i recommend it for uh all you readers out there (laughs) (laughs) brailers all you brailers out there i don't think there's (laughs) there's not uh you know, extenuating circumstances where you'll enjoy this outside of listening to us <laughs> discuss it. So, uh, yeah, probably pass on Runaway. Can I chime in with one thing I sure. forgot to mention? Yeah. Um, did you guys know Tom Selleck is an avocado farmer? And <laughs> and did you know that, like... California avocado? Company? I did not know that. And did you know... That like two years ago when California was having like its worst drought ever, he got like charges brought against him because he stole trucks of water and had them diverted to his avocado <gasps> farm. He stole them? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. What? 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 Tom Selleck? What? He is not the man I oh thought he was. God. <laughs> I take wow. everything I said. Fuck this movie. <laughs> and, wow. and he doesn't even like avocados. He just knows they make a fuck ton of money. <gasps> they make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's a smart is broken. Oh my god! This is slander against this poor upstanding. He he went on like the Late Show or something, and they made him like eat one because they knew he was an avocado farmer, and he like straight up gagged like trying to eat one. He was like, he was like, they're gross, but they make a lot of money. You know, it's like what his thought. He's like, they make a fuck ton of money. So there you go. He's not wrong. So like he exists. He exists. Delicious guacamole. Avocados are great. Oh, guacamole is great. Shut up. He exacerbated the drought though. He made the drought worse. Like you know, yeah. Yeah. I think your takeaway yeah. uh, thing well, is that, that, means- that maybe not uh, Runaway is not in the movie for you. Yeah. So yeah. Then we'll never have Tom Selleck back on this show we, again. You That's know what? We band. might. You show. We'll never. Get- yeah, we're gonna do all those Jesse Stone. Oh, Jesse God, Stone is coming tongue. back. No. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't looked at the. Uh, I honestly don't of, know what uh, else is in his yeah. filmography. Well, that, uh, so. yeah, that's yeah. Like, like well, I'm not going to say we'll never have him back because mm-hmm. you never know. It feels cause... like he may have played a priest at some point. Okay, so <laughs> next week, I know you've been waiting with bated breath to hear what we're going to be watching next week. So next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. What are we uh, watching next week? We're going to get a little crazier next oh, week. Oh no! <laughs> movie we've been talking about for a while. Oh no! The Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, oh shit! Yes, yeah. good. I want to get this 1996 out of the way. version, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. All right. All we right. Watch this. Okay, we're going to get it out of our system then. Yep. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Thank you for listening. And until next week, the basement is going dark.